Hi everyone, again uh, welcome to the LPS class, um, we are continuing our discussion on uh, Python, uh, in the last lecture we saw like uh, the regular expression pretty much like we covered how, how to do the regular expression, um, we saw this particular thing basically where we kind of uh, match the string um, using the R which is the raw string basically like I mean then um, um, once we have that um, um, the one the, the match string then we substitute it uh, PSI 3 with PSI 4 um, and then we explain this this uh, concept of uh, this basically. Um, so uh, we went through this, this section this um, uh, section um, we also talked about uh, some of the additional stuff. Um, so we can uh, use basically can do the um, search regex with the subject or match regex with the subject as alternative syntax um, and the match basically it only looks for the match at the beginning of the line it does not match the whole string just the, um, the search attempts to match throughout the string until it finds a complete match so that is the difference between the match and the search. Um, we also have this find all uh, that is another um, uh, method inside the class RE um, and that actually returns an array of uh, all the non overlapping matches. Um, we can also do like um, uh, using a for um, loop here um, basically which is uh, for M in uh, the find iter um, uh, um, method basically and then you can find each one and then until uh, m is uh, um, basically until you find all of them so it is same as the find all um, and then the the matching itself is uh, basically the regular rule supply basically um, where the, we can start the regex with uh, question mark i question mark s question mark m um, instead so this is something that we saw and then we also saw the split basically uh, which is another method uh, in the regular expression class um, and here when we do the split essentially uh, splits on that particular um, string so it basically it uh, replaces the PSI 3 um, with PSI 4 so in, in this one basically it just splits and then basically we remove them. So your output is going to be just uh, this, this is upgrade the program to PSI4 was an excellent program that is all. So uh, today we will continue some more um, uh, so the discussions on the um, regular expression finish off the regular expression and then move on to the next uh, chapter. Um, so, so basically the match object function essentially like so search and match return a match object the object has some useful functions basically you can do group uh, that is to return the matched string and then start basically that is the starting position of the um, uh, match and then end is uh, the ending position of the match and then we can also like uh, do a span which is basically it's a tuple containing the start and positions of uh, the match. So just to um, understand it more thoroughly like I mean the, you know, the Python offers two different primitive operations based on the regular expression the match checks for the match only at the beginning that we saw and well the search basically searches for the whole thing and both of them returns a match object. Now here are some match object examples. Um, so we declare or we define one of the variables line as uh, the string and then we say match string search for PSI 3 in line um, and then um, so basically the match starts at character we can say match string start 
uh, master this this particular uh, variable start uh, dot start and that gives basically like I mean um, uh, where it starts the match which is the PSF3 and then where it ends and then before the match before match and after match basically that is with uh, you can specify the index and then start and then uh, all the way up to the end. Now start dot end so so this will give you like um, this section. So the first one will say P three and then essentially like um, from three next to all the way up to the end, and then here it will start from here and then ends up here. So now let us talk about the um, capture groups, so um, this is useful to actually apply certain uh, after after obtaining a match take that uh, match and then use it in the as a next uh, variable to do some processing. So we did this for both Perl and uh, Tickle, so the parenthesis inside the regular expression uh, denote a capture group which can be accessed by the number or by name to get the matching essentially of the capture text. So we can name the capture groups with this kind of syntax where we can say like a question mark P and then the name and then we can also take advantage of the triple quoted strings which are multiple lines if you remember we talked about that to define the regular expression uh, and that can include comments as well and if you use the this particular method which is uh, verbose uh, method that option then you can use that. So let us look at some examples here, so again we um, define a in file where we open this test dot text with a read only and then um, we define all the lines basically like where we uh, read the lines um, and this is the method for the uh, reading the lines or the in file and then we close that uh, particular file. Now um, we use the triple quoted string essentially like I mean so we want to restring. Um, so we start with the triple, triple quoted string basically like some optional white space in the beginning and then we say basically so okay now um, question mark P key um, and then uh, followed by any of the things so any any word that begins with P we match that here and then uh, we again have like um, um, equal sign with um, some optional white spaces so wherever there is some equal sign there and then finally like I mean the non space uh, after the equals to is the value basically so we match the key and we match the value and they are stored in uh, the key and then the value so here as we saw here basically um, the P name so so assume that you have like a x y equal to 3 b equal to 4 c equal to 5 something like that in this particular test dot text file. So now we have the thing before the equal to is the key and then thing after the equal to is the value so this becomes an um, an array that you can store as a key value pair. Then we do the um, restring ignore case essentially, like I mean, then um, um, uh, then pipe it to the verbose basically, and then that is what we are compiling. And then um, we do like the for line in the lines, so print key equal to the match group key, and then uh, value is match group value. Um, so this again prints basically x y 
and then three and then it continues on D four C five. So that's what we want to get basically. So in the in the other words, actually, like now this is for as an array basically. You can think of this as restring x y e equal to three. This is what we are stored essentially. So now let us move on to the next uh, topic which is the collection data types. So here we will talk about uh, triples. Um, The lists and dictionaries essentially. So, a uh, triples uh, are collections of uh, collection of data items, um, they may be of different types and. Uh, Usually tuples are immutable just like strings that we saw basically like I mean the, the lists are like tuples but they are mutable so that is the difference between a list and a tuple. So Python uses this um, parenthesis to denote a tuple um, you could also use um, the the parenthesis um, if you have just one um, you have only one item um, but if you have one uh, sorry if you have only one item then we need to use a comma to indicate a tuple so here we have like three names so we just put comma and then put it in, put it in the tuple whereas if you have just one name we just put the name then followed by comma and then put it inside the parenthesis. And then the empty tuple is denoted by um, just um, empty parenthesis. We need to in enclose a tuple in a parenthesis if you want to pass it all together as one argument to a function. So this is you can think of in a tuple we had this basically like notation where we pass the entire thing as this one object. So some of the other things that you want to uh, know about uh, tuples are tuples are also like um, iterable meaning like you can iterate one by one um, And um, the yeah, anything like I mean that that's pretty much it basically on the triple. Um, now the lists essentially um, lists are like uh, tuples. Um, the only difference is that they are mutable that means that you can actually change that data structure and they are denoted by square brackets um, instead of the the parenthesis. So 
so here we have like 1 3 5 uh, 7 11 and that is the that is denoted as a list and then uh, you can also have different values basically 0 1 boom is also a list and empty list is just uh, square brackets uh, stuck together. And so the the mutable property is described here. Basically, you can add elements to the um, the list, or basically, you can append an item. Um, here we define a particular list one, two, three, and if you want to append done to it, we use the method x append done, and then that prints out um, with that. Both uh, lists and tuples um, contain object references. So uh, the list and tuples are also objects; they can be nested. So you can actually describe a tuple within a, um, uh, a list and a list within a tuple, and a tuple within a tuple and a list within a list. So here we can say basically: so um, a equal to zero, one, two. B is a three four. And when we print a, it basically a nested uh, list is getting printed. If you print b zero one, it prints one. So if you print b one zero, basically that results in an error. So the zero one is this object. So so B zero, if you just print B zero, that is zero one two, and B one is three. So B zero one is actually this object, which is one, whereas B Zero, zero is just zero. Okay. So some more examples uh, of lists. Um, so this is like a list example of pi. We define one list which is uh, just the uh, odd number except uh, odd numbers except nine and we print x now when we print x2 and um, And anyone tell me like what is this one? This is actually like now it's five. X two is five. Now we do this operation, which is we are doing an assignment x two equal to zero. Now what do you think? Um, will this replacement happen? It happens in list because lists are mutable, so we can you can actually change them. So we will replace five with zero with um, when we assign this one, and then if we print out x, it it prints like one, three, zero, seven, eleven, and then we can apply a x append the a method append to it with number thirteen, which just adds thirteen at the end, and everything in square brackets, okay, and then if you remove one. This removes one, and it is not the item at position one. It just removes one item. So the remove one basically will be removing the first item. The position one is actually number three. So this is the first item just gets removed. 
and then we after that we insert at the first position we insert number 42 so this now the insert actually takes this as the positional thing so for that it starts from 0 1 2 so the one position is going to insert 42 so your um, um, overall list is going to be like 3 42 then 0 7 so the 0 is pushed and then it gets inserted there. Uh, I want you to remember this uh, thing the remove one does not mean that the first position gets removed but the insert one means that the first insertion the insertion happens at the first position ok. Now let us look at the some of the indexing so the indexing we know that actually it starts from 0 1 2 3 and 4. So in this case if the x2 is actually 5 that is because it is counting from left to right it is 0 1 and 2 and then when we do an assignment with um, x2 equal to 0 uh, since it is a mutable it basically now changes that and then so that uh, the 5 is replaced with 0. So the difference between again the list and the triple that we saw uh, is while the index indexing of a triple also works exactly the same way when it starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 you cannot do this operation because the the triple is an immutable uh, data structure. So you want to do that, um, and then slices is another one. Slices um, work as for strings, basically. Like so, if you remember, um, you know, string like I mean, um, S T R I N G. We can specify a slice of um, R I N, which is like starting from two, three, four, two column four. That's the string. Um, those are still apply. With uh, the lists, um, so here we can specify like I mean it's uh, two column four, and then that is like um, zero one two two four. So two and three will be printed out. So here it's basically R N is two two column five. <laughs> And now we can uh, this additional operator, which is basically the incremental operator that we saw. Basically, um, so here we have a, a list one three five. So we can use the method a dot append. This is one way to do it. And then we say seven, and then that gets added at the end. We can also do just simply a equal to plus, and then the square brackets seven, and then this will add that element into that list. But if you try just a plus equal to just regular seven, this is a failing failed case because you need to specify the seven inside the the list file for it to be added to the existing list so when, when we do this the result is 1 3 5 and 7 and then we can also add anything basically so we say like uh, the end add the end into the list so again we use the same thing um, and then now we feel print a it is 1 3 5 7 and then the string the um, hyphen end. So this is another shortcut operator that you can use it instead of the append function. Okay. 
Now let us look at uh, the dictionaries. The dictionaries are nothing but um, items are it is an unordered collection where items are accessed by a key and not by the position uh, in the list. So a dictionary is just like a hash uh, in Perl. The collections of arbitrary objects um, and uh, you can use object references like this. And then dictionaries are also nestable. Um, you can grow and shrink in place, just like list. And it allows concatenation, slicing, and other operations that uh, depend on order of the elements. So they depend on the order of the ele uh, elements. Do not work on dictionary. So all these concatenation, slicing, and operations which depend on the order of elements, they do not work in dictionaries. So let us look at some examples of a dictionary. So here in this example um, create like jobs um, basically David Professor Sahan postdoc Sean grad student. So these are the three um, uh, elements that we define inside the dictionary and you notice that actually um, each of them is basically it's a, it's a keyword followed by a colon and then another keyword and then a comma. So anything before colon is the is your key and then the other side is the value. So if you just say jobs Sahan it gives you post down. And then this is also a mutable database so essentially you can just say like jobs Sean equal to postdoc and then you can change the job of uh, uh, Sean also to a postdoc. And then if you want to list uh, of keys and values uh, we use this um, basically like the this method keys so for jobs dot keys basically it prints the three keys. And um, if you notice basically like the order actually uh, it is changed originally our order was David, Sahan and Sean now the new order is Sahan, Sean and David. And then values generate um, again the corresponding values in the thing so this is another um, um, method that you want to remember and then once you uh, specify the values you get postdoc, postdoc, and professor, which are the professors of I mean profession of uh, or the jobs of these people. To query like uh, every uh, element, which is like a key and the value together, we use the items function. So the jobs dot items uh, function returns Sahan, postdoc, Sean, postdoc, David, professor. So that is how you can access those values in the list in the in the dictionary. So the key thing that you want to remember is it starts with a um, curly braces ends with a curly brace that is the dictionary and then the items uh, the each key is separated from its value by this uh, colon. And then the each items are separated by commas essentially, so that is what here. And then the whole thing is enclosed within the curly braces. So the empty um, dictionary you can create it by just uh, putting um, empty curly braces.
So here only thing is um, even though we said that basically like this is a mutable type of database um, the keys are of uh, immutable database in uh, data type uh, so keys are immutable they they should be one of either string number or a tuple these are the only um, data types allowed as the key the value can be anything else so because the value itself is not uh, uh, immutable it is actually immutable. So now let us look at some of the common operations um, that we can do uh, in a dictionary. So we can delete an entry by just um, um, using DAL um, followed by D and then the key name. Then, uh, if you want to add an entry, then we just basically say um, the new key is uh, the new value. If you want to find out if particular key is in the dictionary, we can use the has key function, has key key name or um, key name in D. Basically, this is another another thing you can see. The get is a method that is useful to return value, but uh, no, it does not uh, fail basically, so it returns uh, none um, if the keys does not exist. So you can use the get to get the one, but um, if it, it it won't fail basically, the key doesn't exist. So that is only caveat. So the way to use it is the get and then the key value and then the default. Update merges one dictionary with another, and then this overwrites the values uh, with the same key. So the usage is like the update d2, and then we give the dictionary version uh, of concatenation. So now if you want to iterate a dictionary through the keys um, we can use the for command So here actually like I mean we can specify like bond with the win and Margaret Mitchell um, Ineid, um Virgil and Odyssey by Homer and then we do the for book in book authors so it knows that the the key is actually like going to be um, the book and then we basically you know, book authors book basically so it um, it gets each one and then um, um, it adds the by and then basically prints the whole thing. So wherever like I mean when we specify a variable that always iterates on the key. So as you can see like actually key is the most important item in a dictionary. So um, the properties for the of dictionary keys essentially the values themselves have no restriction they can be any arbitrary python object either standard objects or user defined objects um, but 
there are two important things that you want to remember one is more than one entry per key is allowed so if you have um, so when a duplicate key is encountered during an assignment the last assignment always wins so um, a simple example will be um, define a dictionary it equals again the three things that you want to define in dictionary are enclosed within curly braces and then put the key say name and then put the colon essentially and then say zara and then comma right so this forms one element and then age again colon and then Sarah and then another comma and then finally again we call it name colon num this also includes we need to close the parenthesis so now in this particular um, dictionary if you want to print dict in square brackets name and this will always be many the zara name is gone only retains man because that's what its last updated value is so if it cannot be hashed it just just overwrites it um, overwrites the previous value or with the new value now constructing uh, dictionaries from lists so for this we can use the zip function so um, if there are two separate lists for keys and values we can combine them into a dictionary using the zip function and uh, the dict constructor so that we have a dict constructor and a zip function so the way to use is basically we define the keys we define the values and then the dictionary uh, variable we go to dict zip keys with values so some general keys uh, instruction basically like so keys don't have to be strings it can be any value that we already saw it's only it's uh, immutable data type including uh, tuples um this particular property is uh, good for representing uh, sparse matrices so here there is a matrix um, which is um um, just a blank dictionary and then we populate um, essentially uh, one value 101 one with point 0.5 so the key is uh, triple you can see that basically it is enclosed in the parenthesis and then 114 is another one which is point 0.8 so to represent this basically uh, so it is it's a good that um, you do not have the uh, string or any other um, data type. So collection length essentially is computed using the len variable that returns the length of a tuple list or a dictionary. 
that is like how many number of characters um, of a string. So len Tony with this parenthesis because this is a, a tuple and we are looking for the, the, the length of the tuple it returns 1. But if you do a length of just Tony without the tuple now it returns 4 and length of a list essentially it is 0 1 boom is 3. So um, let me talk about some of the built in operators um, dictionary functions and methods within the thing so len len is one of them the other one is uh, CMP CMP basically the usage is dict1 and dict2 so this method actually uh, uses CMP basically compares these two dictionaries and then sees whether they are the same or different we can also have a str dict which is a conversion uh, from the dictionary to string and then there is also a type variable This returns the type of the past variable. If the past variable is a dictionary, it will it will define or it will return a dictionary type. Now Python also supports several other methods. One is dict clear. This clears the all the elements in the dictionary, essentially uh, dict, and then uh, copy is another one which makes a shallow copy of uh, the dictionary itself, and then the dictionary from keys is another object that creates a new dictionary with the keys from uh, the old dictionary, and then um, it sets the values uh, for to zero. Uh, No, sorry. The set the values to the value itself. So the usage is uh, this dict, not from keys. And then the from keys as uh, the the parenthesis as well. And then uh, there is also a dict key with the default um, none. Uh, this returns the key and then uh, it returns a value or a default if the key is not in the dictionary and then dict has key actually returns uh, true if the key in the dictionary is um, key in the dictionary dict is found and dict items essentially it returns a collection of uh, dicts. Uh, key value triple pair the standard faulty uh, is uh, another one which is uh, similar to the get but it um, So the dict has um, has key um, returns true if the key is in the dictionary dict or returns false, and then we have items, update, dict values. There are several methods that are available. Now let's talk about the is operator. Um, the Python variables are um, really like object references. This is something that we saw. The is operator checks to see if the references uh, referred to by the same uh, by the object the same object um, are, are they like actually like referenced by the same object or not.
here we can have uh, two identical objects which are not the same object um, actually uh, uh, try to access the other other location and then um, the references to the integer constants should be identical so um, the reference to strings may or may not show up in the top as uh, referring to the same object two identical mutable objects are not necessarily the same object so let's look at uh, an example some examples of this operator so here we define two of them and then print x is y then it is true here but it is not necessary 1 comma 2 this one is false because it is a list and then in a triple again if you ask print uh, x is y it is also false even though it is identical and immutable and then x is equal to the square bracket basically where um, x is none uh, true so now we talk about an in operator in operator is for um, the fraction data set again. Um, the in operator determines whether something is a member of a collection or not. So, this is what we used for for like some uh, value whether that is part of the program or not. So, we use that. So, uh, here an example basically like team we define as three people and then uh, we say like whether Howell is in the team. And then it says false, and then um, <coughs> um, Stuart not in a team. Uh, so the keywords are here basically. Then it, it becomes true. To traverse the collection data type, um, we have to use the um, we can use the IN essentially for something in something. So, this something in something is defined here, this is the numbers are defined as 1, 2, 3, and then we can say like for I in numbers. So basically it takes those things and then print the time. So here we get one, two, and three. So now how do we copy collections? Essentially in the um we can actually um Um, if you if you make an if you use an assignment it uh, it just makes a new kind of new uh, reference to the same collection so um, here basically like we just say uh, it's a list b equal to a c equal to a colon a call a star bracket and then just call and then if say b equal to one and c equal to one and then uh, we say like um, then ask to print the A, B, and C. So then now um, essentially like it prints zero five three zero five three and zero seven three. And we can copy the dictionary with the copy function. So essentially it's this A column copy. 
now there are a lot of uh, other methods essentially like for um, the this uh, variable essentially um, so some of them are one is uh, clear which uh, removes all elements of the dictionary or dictionary whichever dictionary that is specified the copy that we saw basically it's uh, returns a shallow copy of uh, the dictionary from keys we saw already like how that is set and then get key default none it gets all the keys and then uh, has key uh, returns the um, value basically of the, the key uh, returns true if the key is in the dictionary else uh, it is false and then the item that we saw uh, keys we saw um, and then we can also do a set default there um, we can um, um, which is very similar to the, the uh, get uh, or db uh, copy uh, sorry db get or the get uh, parenthesis uh, function. And update is essentially we saw that that is uh, updates the key value pair and then values actually gives uh, the dictionary of uh, the dictionary's values. So let us stop at this point uh, today and then we will go into the advanced functions in the next class. Okay. Um.